Okay, so this is uh, today's topic, Tulsi uh, Jal Dan. Jal is water, Dan is uh, donation of offering. offering of Keshav Vrat as well. Two things, very interesting. And actually our focus is gonna be on Keshav Vrat. So uh, yesterday or day before is actually Tulsi uh, Jal Dan, that's when it started. And what happens is, it's now the beginning of the hot season in Bharat, very, very hot. So uh, it's a tradition that a pot of dripping water is placed over Tulsi and Shaligram to keep them cool in the summer month. This whole month, this happens. It's also the time when Keshavrat starts. And so for one month, um, this is the recommended, the Vrat, control the senses, sleep on the ground, bathe twice daily in a river, <laughs> if you have a river near you, worship the Lord, give cloth, sugar, sesame, rice, and gold to the Brahmins. So this is um, the recommendation for this front. And if one worships Madhusudan in this month, one gains the benefit of uh, a whole year's worship. So while this cache of breath lasts, one may hang a pot uh, of water with a hole in it, uh, filling it up with water, of course, and let that water drip over Tulsi and Shaligra. So I don't know if anybody does that. Um, uh, we we gently did try, but... Uh, yeah, did not did it. Have you done it? No, Prabhuji, I never did it. Okay, so next year, okay? Okay, Prabhuji. You and uh, maybe even now, if you ask your mother, you might be able to do it. But next year, aim for next year. But actual subject we want to talk about is Keshavrat, which is very interesting, uh, very very interesting. Now, what happened? Uh, hang on a minute. Why is that not come through? Ah, yeah. So the last demon, pretty much the last demon that Krishna killed was the Keshi demon. And who was the Keshi demon? Horse demon. Yeah, very good. The horse demon. So after he killed the Keshi demon, pretty much a crew came and took Krishna and Balaram to Mathura. So he became known as Keshav, the one who kills Keshi demon. And anytime the Brajabasis hear the name Keshav, they cry and cry and cry. Why do they cry? Because that was the last demon that Krishna killed before he went to Mathura. Hmm. So then, long time later. It also mm -hmm. means Not. his long flowing hair, his yeah. Keshi's hair. Mm. So remember him as that. So you say louder. Yeah, Ke Keshav is also refers to his long flowing hair because Kesh is hair. Because and so they remember him with his long flowing hair mm -hmm. while he was in Vrindavan. So then, when he was later on, he in Mathura, he, he he did his work, he killed Kams, etc. And then many other so, uh, kings came and he defeated them all with Balaram. And then they made the uh, city in Dwarka. So he lived in Dwarka, but he wasn't particularly happy in Dwarka. Um, the Lord is of course self-satisfied. This is Leela. This is his pastimes. So Keshav, he thought to himself, I've spoken so many things in the, uh, before the battle of the Kurukshetra. Anybody want to recite this verse? Kamakshi, you wanted to recite a verse? Why don't you recite this one? All right. Sarva Dharma Parityaja Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, verse 66. Good. Um, I'll let you do the next one. Yeah, let um, Riyanch, you want to do the next one? Yes, Prabhuji. Go the for current it. 
to me and worship me being completely absorbed in me surely you will come to me bhagavad gita 9.34 well done and you know this one as well huh yes prabhu ji well done well done so krishna was thinking to himself i preach this i've told this to people now these people in dwarka they've arrested me and they won't let me go they do not really know how to please me nor is that their desire right there were his family members there were people who wanted things they had full of desires they were full of desires keshav he was alone unhappy in the fortress of dwarka <laughs> and he was praying to the brijabasis no one really loves me here right i fulfill their desires and this makes them happy but the next moment they have more desires that they want me to fulfill this is why they show affection to me this is why they have kept me here so we we got to be careful we don't fall into this trap that we have lots of desires and we pray to krishna please i want this i want that i want this and we only care for him because he fulfills desires which is what he does he gives whatever we want but if that's the only reason we pray to him then krishna will be feeling very lonely in our hearts right because we don't really love him we just love the things he gives us and that was his mood in dwarka everybody wanted something they wanted a piece of krishna and krishna is so kind he gives <laughs> so let's not fall into that trap thank you aruna in brach bhumi everybody however lives only to please me dear gopis now i am unhappy please make me joyful again when am i with you when i am with you i am happy but how can i return i tell my devotees that this world is not good and that they should renounce all attachments and come to me but now they have not only come to me they have arrested me <laughs> <laughs> so in our prayers uh, actually there's only one prayer that really we should be praying and that is let me serve you let me do something for you because everybody is asking him for something right everybody wants something from god either good health or a car or a wife or a husband or a job or a home everybody is demanding and krishna is busy fulfilling the orders of or these desire orders but if we can mold our life so that we don't ask for anything but we simply say to the lord my dear lord i want to serve you that's all that's very really refreshing for krishna that's the mood of the bridge basis how can i please krishna so even we may have some difficulties but like gajendra or indra dumna maharaj he got cursed right he got cursed to be an elephant for no real real fault of his own but how did he take that curse who would like to answer that question how did he take that curse blessing blessing yeah he accepted it 
On what basis did he accept it? Do you remember? There were two things he said to himself. Anybody remember? What are the two things? Why are we why do we get trouble? <laughs> what are the two things? Because we have poor materialism. Yeah. But why why does bad things happen to us? Conversely, why do good things happen to us? Sorry? Oh karma. Karma. Excellent. Karma. Karma. And the second thing, which is one thing that really sells it to us. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little hard to accept, right? Karma. Hey, I didn't do anything wrong. Why did that happen to me? What sort of karmic reaction is that? I never did, I never said anything wrong to that person, and yet they've said this to me. Or something's happened to us. You know, we lost something which is very dear to us. So yes, we put it down to karma, but we may not accept it. But the second thing that Indra Dumna Maharaj convinced himself that this is a good thing. What is that? Anybody remember? It's a tough question, actually. It's, it's a chitra question. <laughs> what, Prabhuji? What was the second thing that Indra Dumna Maharaj was thinking about why he accepted that curse as a blessing? What was that? There was two things, bad karma and? Good karma. Lord. What was that? Good karma. No, the Lord's no. will. Yeah. Well done, Karuna. Lord's mercy. He sanctioned mm -hmm. it. He sanctioned it. His will. And that's the one that sells it to us. That yes, if something happens to us, yes, we put it down to bad karma. But also, the Lord has made it happen. He sanctioned it. It's meant to happen. So that sells it. That's it. Um, don't need anything else. He's approved it. And the Lord won't do anything which is not good for us. So it's fine. We live with it. We accept it. And we get on with our life. And that's why if simply, uh, if something happens to us, something we try not to pray to the Lord for protection. Don't need to. Protection is automatic. He always protects, especially his devotees. So what do we ask for instead? I want to serve you. I want to serve you. That's all I want to do. Let's stay in the association of devotees. Don't even have to ask that, right? I just want to serve you. He'll automatically put us in the association of devotees. Because even that's selfish. Right? I want to be, I want to just have the company of devotees. I just want to serve you, my Lord. You decide how I want to serve you. And we might think, oh, okay, you know, <laughs> how can we possibly serve the Lord? What can we do? You know, we're so insignificant. And that's true. We are insignificant. But we can serve the Lord by simply chanting. Simply chanting his holy names. He becomes pleased. That's service. Reading about Krishna is service. Telling others about Krishna is service. These are really important services. They're not insignificant. They're very, very significant. And there's an example about how devotees who don't ask for anything, and what happens, the Lord comes himself and protects. And even that, the, de the devotee doesn't want. There's an example of, uh, I can't remember who it was now, Sanatan or Rupa, one of the two. He was Sanatan, I think it was Sanatan, wasn't it? Or was it Rupa? I think Rupa Goswami was sitting in the sunshine doing his japa. And at that time, Radha was looking at him and said to Krishna, Krishna, look, Rupa is going to burn, get sunburned. Go and protect him. And Krishna was just admiring Rupa. He didn't do anything. <laughs> he was just thinking, my devotee, look at him. So Radha went and gave shell, shade to Rupa Goswami. And she was sweating away, right, holding this cloth over Rupa. And Sanatana happened to come by and he saw her serving Rupa Goswami. And he came and he told Rupa Goswami off. <laughs> 
Look what you're doing. You're making them serve you. You're supposed to be serving them. <laughs> I told you before, you should build a hut and do your japa in your hut. <laughs> so then they built a hut for Rupa Goswami. So in that way, uh, uh, the mood of like the Goswamis is that we want to serve. We don't want any service from the Lord. We simply want to serve. And this is what Krishna is saying about the Brijabhasis. They don't want anything from me. They only live to please me. That's why Prabhupada, when he said, when he was asked, uh, what does this mantra mean? It means, I want to serve you, my Lord. This is the most important thing about this mantra. Hare Krishna mantra. Anyway, only someone with relationship with my followers is truly my follower. These people who have trapped me here don't have affection. For you, the bridge bases, they only like me, right? Only because they can, Krishna gives them something. <laughs> Bali Maharaj made the Lord his gatekeeper. Others pray to God for protection of their head, shoulders, thighs, feet, all body parts separately. They want God to work hard for their sake. <laughs> this is, we don't want God, to, we don't want Krishna to be engaged in our service. Even we may have aches and pains, we deal with them ourselves. We try to deal with them as much as we can ourselves. So then Kesha prays, how can I become free? Actually, maybe you can do the uh, late bridge bases. The bridge bases heard Kesha's prayer and answered him. Will you follow advice? They asked. Yes. <laughs> Oops. We want only your happiness. We know you are suffering there. We also know how you can be freed. But do you promise to do as we advise? Yes, yes. We have one point of love for you. We are Sarnagat. We have given up everything for you. We have completely forsaken all our relatives to be with you. But till now, you have not made such a sacrifice. You now have no strength to free yourself. You are alone. If you promise to, as we say, you will have relief. I promise to do whatever you say. I promise. The Rajadevi said, and take sannyas, renounce <laughs> all attachments, ties and obligations. You will have to give up all your friends and relatives. You will have to renounce society, comforts and all the duties and learn to follow our rules. Do you agree to this? Yes. I will take sannyas from Keshava Bharti. But in the meantime, I need practice. I will follow a brat. This is the Keshav brat. That will teach me how to follow this advice. So Keshav brat is the brat of renunciation. That is why people are afraid of it. So that's why we don't hear much about this Keshav brat. If you follow this brat, you will surely take up sannyas dharma. You will be a follower of the Bridget Devis and full of strength. Keshav Vrat is the Vrat of renunciation. Uh, sorry, no, no. The Bridge Devis instructed Krishna to chant the Gopi Mantra. So this Gopi Mantra is when somebody takes sannyas, they get this Gopi Mantra. It's a sannyas mantra. Keshav said, I will absorb my mind in Brajabhumi and its residence. I will bathe and become submerged in Brajadrasthara the flow of Braj's nectar. I will sit, I will stay near Brinda Devi. So Keshav's promise to the Braj Devis was fulfilled in Kali Yuga when he accepted sannyas and he went to Jagannath Puri. In that holy place, he discussed the topics of Brajabhasis and their prema with Surup Damudar Rai Ramanand. Yeah. He did not allow anyone else to meet with him, saying, I am now a sannyasi. <laughs> so he renounced everything. When Keshav became one-pointed, surrendered, follower of the Bridge Devis, he became supremely happy. <laughs> this is Keshav Prat. So it carries on a little bit more. So there's different aspects to this. First he went to the gopis, now he will go to the sakhas, the gopas. After the season of spring, the old leaves make way for the new ones. Many flowers also bloom 
on the four sides of Govardhan and Vrindavan. They exude a, such an intoxicating fragrance. Although there are many flowers, the Kunjas groves weren't entirely formed. Krishna thought, I have met the Bhaji Devis since a long time. So he's been in Dwarka. What should I do? Where should I hide? Perhaps in the forest. So Krishna told his Sakhas, near Mansi Ganga, there is a forest. A god has appeared in this forest. And of course, that's Krishna himself. This god is very special. He gives many boons. He will fulfill any desire of yours. But you should worship him by pasting sandalwood. You should then smear this sandalwood paste all over his body. Also offer some drinks to him. Make drinks from chickpea flour, wheat and corn, barley corn. Thus he will be very pleased. All the Bijbasis made many types of drinks. Drinks made from honey, buttermilk, mangoes. These drinks were stored in clay pots. The deity of the forest became very happy upon receiving sandalwood paste and these drinks. That's Krishna, of course. He was very pleased to be served by these Bijbasis. All the Bijbasis asked for a boon. Oh, you might be thinking, another boon. Krishna's going to work hard. And he gladly blessed them. His body was entirely covered by sandalwood paste. The Brijabhasis thought before Krishna told us to worship Giriraj Govardhan. Now he told us to worship this deity of the forest. But the Brijabhasis only prayed. Their only desire was the well-being of Krishna. See, this is the difference between the Brijabhasis and everybody else. Everybody else wants something for themselves. The Brijabhasis, they just want something for Krishna. And we've got to get that mood into our psyche as well. We just want the welfare of Krishna. We want to serve Krishna. They only wanted to serve Krishna. The gopis came with water from the Manasi Ganga. They told the forest deity, we, bathe, we will bathe you with this water and apply fresh sandalwood paste on you. Why should you be covered by sandalwood paste that, becomes, that has become stale? When the gopis started to clean the deity, they saw their hands were becoming black. They were, became very surprised. They thought, how will the deity become golden upon being covered by sandalwood paste? He has always been black. <laughs> they then abused the deity, knowing it was Krishna. <laughs> Soon after, they were embraced and kissed by the deity. <laughs> the gopis then poured all the drinks of this on this mysterious figure and ran away. Thus many pastimes manifest in this month. So this month is very famous. Tulsi appeared with Shalagram Shila when Satyu began. The Rishis and the Maharishis worshipped Keshav Dev to have a spiritual relation manifest in their hearts. So that's second part. There's another part. Uh, hang on, what's this? Krishna was so thought. Okay, let's see what this is. During this time of Holi, so Holi was just... Uh, a week or two weeks back, right? Not long ago. So this is the same sort of time. A month ago. Was it a month ago? <laughs> time flies by. All the bridge bases, including the Sakas and myself, smeared ourselves with the foot dust of Bridge Davies. We also bathed ourselves with the water that has been bathed the Bridge Davies' feet. We splashed this water on each other, the Bridge Davies. Uh, service tendency and love is unparalleled. Everything about the Bridge Davies is special. That's the gopis. Five two weeks ago. But I cannot avail myself of their love. How can this be made possible? So he's trying to get their love, right? I will also serve and practice. Mm -hmm. So Krishna is thinking, right, you know, I need to do some practice. This is partly the Keshe Vrat. He takes the Vrat to practice how to serve the gopis. I will train myself. Therefore, Krishna came to Shringar Ghat. Krishna prayed and requested the Sakis. He told them, please give me a chance to serve. <laughs> I will also practice and undergo training. Everyone worships me, everyone serves me. They offer everything to me and I accept whatever they have to offer. I do so for their pleasure, but I can't serve myself. Please teach me, please help me. Give me the chance to comb rather on his hair. <laughs> the Sakis became surprised on listening to Krishna's entity they thought which mood has krishna which mood has entered krishna's heart after the holy and the vasanta leela he has changed before he was a crooked cheater 
Now he has become very simple, sweet, polite, humble, and quiet. He repeatedly tells us, please give me a chance to serve Srimati Radharani. <laughs> the Sakis ask Krishna, how will you serve her? I will comb her long hair. I will decorate her hair with many flowers. Then her mercy will shower on me. What will you do with her mercy? Everyone serves Srimati Radharani, but I have never served her. I never practiced serving her in my life. I am worshipable to the entire world, but I didn't serve Srimati Radharani. Before Krishna thought of helping the devotees, but then he thought, the 33 million demigods are there to help and serve my devotees. My expansions serve the devotees as well. Krishna felt he, had, he never learned how to serve. Therefore, he is in Shingar Vrat, Vata. He proclaimed, I will observe Vrata for one whole month. I will be trained and I will learn how to serve. <laughs> so what was Krishna's service? Collecting many flowers, making nice garlands. He combed rather on his hair, decorated her with many flowers he had collected. He also would paint Radha's hand. Thus Krishna became an expert in many forms of arts. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. But there's a little bit more about after Krishna left this world. Um, his grandson, Bhajanab. So who is that? His son with Rukmini, the first son was Padumna, who had a son called Aniruddha, who had a son called Brajanab. He's the grandson of Krishna. He came to Brajamandal and Brajanab met with Udav, Vidur, Maitre Rishi. And Udav told Brajanab, you have come to eternal Brajadam. So you must install the deities of Sri Krishna here. Braj Brajna performed austerities with Uddhav for a long time in Braj during this month. Vishakha is the Shiksha Guru of this month. Just as Uddhav performed many austerities to obtain the blessings of Vishakha and the Braj Devi. Similarly, uh, Brajna also did austerities this entire month. By Krishna's and the Vajradevi's causeless mercy, Vajna manifested the deities of Krishna. He manifested Keshav first, then the deities of Govindev, Haridev, Bharadev, and he installed these four deities. So Vajna, Uddhav, Narad, and the rest of the devotees started a Vratta, Vrat on the banks of Govardhan. Their worship was similar to how Gopal Bhatt Goswami worshipped the Shaligram Shila. So he would apply sandalwood paste and offer tulsi leaves to Shaligram. And then, if the devotees recall, the following day Shaligram became Radha Raman. Therefore, Keshav manifested himself after Vajnav and Uddhav worshipped him for this one month. And it is said that if Tulsi and Shalagram are worshipped in any place in Kali Yuga, that place is completely protected. This is also true of that place where Gita and Bhagavatam is recited. So that's it. Tulsi Jaldan Kijay and Keshav Vrat Kijay. Any questions, any comments? Very interesting pastimes. Mm -hmm. Anybody awake? Prabhuji, <laughs> we are all awake. <laughs> what do you yeah. think of the pastime? Very good, Prabhuji. Very nice explanation. <laughs> Keshava Virth means, does it mean any Keshava word or something? Keshava is it? Krishna's name. Okay. Yeah, Keshava means uh, Krishna. He did the vrat himself. To so that's why it's called Krish Kesha Vrata, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Okay, good. So we can. Uh...